everyone. Today is super secret, top secret stuff because I am sharing my personal top five hacks and more importantly, duct tape haps for the workshop. I'm Rachel DeBarros and this is Gearhead Diva. So today is super special because that is right. It is hack day and I have your messages rolling in right here. So I was checking them out while the, the pre things were rolling. And so if you have any questions, comments, feel free to chime along. And so for today, well, in addition to the five duct tape hacks, for the workshop, whew, say that many times fast, that's a tough one. I made this very cool wallet with some leftover, yep, you guessed it, duct tape. So check out all the amazing features. So of course, where you put your moolah. And those of you that work on cars and love to work on cars, well, your wallet probably looks similar to this one. And of course, we have to have room for our credit cards because we buy car parts online as well, along with a super secret pocket, another super secret pocket, and a place, you know, for your ID because, listen, after working all day in the shop, you want to be able to go out uh, to places that sometimes require an ID. So that's our duct tape wallet, but before we get started, let's talk about some of the materials that you're going to need because we are actually going to build this along with sharing my top duct tape workshop hacks. So of course, rolls of duct tape. Now, one is just fine if you just want to use the plain old silver like I did. Of course, I added some camo and that was actually on purpose. I'm trying to find a way to help me not spend as much on car parts and I figure with this camo design, well, it helps camouflage it. So if I put it down, I'm online, I'm about to make a purchase for those amazing, I don't know, exhausts cold air intake, you name it, while well, I go to try and find my wallet and oh my gosh, it's lost. I, I can't see it. I put it down and it's completely camouflaged. So that's the idea behind this. But I'm gonna wait while you guys grab your materials like your duct tape to build along with me, a pair of scissors, even better, a hobby knife. This makes your life a ton easier and some clear tape, and I'll explain this later. And I have a cutting board here. Now you don't really need one, all you need is a ruler, but this makes it so much faster and easier. So getting onto it, First, my number one shop hack. Here it is, it's sitting right next to me. Drum roll now. Okay, I, I hear some of you, okay? She's like, oh my God, she done made a purse. No, this is not a purse. This is actually an amazing tool bag satchel. And I actually use this a ton because you can make them in all different sizes. They're great for organizing bits. And when you're working either on the lift, well, you can use this as a tool belt. You can put all your sockets and as you remove parts, you put all your small bits in here. You can even create little pockets on the sides. So if you wanna build your very own tool, small bit, bag, check out how I did it. So first, you wanna find a container of some sort. This can be a liquor bottle, this can be a soup can, uh, dog or cat food cans work really well too if you wanna make you know little mini containers for your small bits. The toughest part is wrapping the tape, so the sticky part is on the outside. I actually got more tape on myself than I did on this container. And of course, the taller you make the container, the tougher it is to get this thing off. And you wanna make sure no stickiness is on the container when you're wrapping it, and then you finish it off with, of course, uh, shiny side up tape. That's another one. We've got a lot of huge phrases we're using, shiny side up for our tape. And then once you have that done, you wanna make sure that none of the adhesive is actually touching your, your canister that you're using, whether it be a liquor bottle or whatever. And so I used a pry tool just to pry that adhesive off the top where that's normally where you're gonna find it. And once you get it going, it becomes easy to take off, but that first pull is pretty tough. Now this is totally optional. You can add some kind of belt 
belt or some kind of shoulder harness so you can just work and just drop all the parts in there. I usually have all the sockets I'm gonna need, ratchets all in there so you can just grab and work. You can leave them all sitting out on the driveway as you work too. So I find this really useful and I know some of you are like, oh, I don't know about it. Trust me, I use these things so much and I have different sizes and the best part of it is it's collapsible. Look, completely collapsible. So you can stick it in your toolbox. You can have all kinds of different sizes. Then pull it out and whammo, ready to use. It's great. You can sit it right on top of the oil. No problem. Very easy to clean. You can run water inside, quickly clean it out. So it's a great uh, survival tool as well. So I always find it interesting survival and working the shopper. Very common sometimes. So now that we have our first hack down, well, let's start actually building this wallet thing. So I trust you have your handy dandy tape and all I'm gonna do is start with my fine pretty tape and of course I have this uh, silver tape here that we can use for some of the parts you can't see and for trimming. And all I'm gonna do is on my little work uh, cutting board here. I'm just going to turn this around so that way this design is facing me here. And we are going to go ahead and lay out some tape. And I like to use the grid marks because we're going to lay out eight inches of tape. So that helps me line it up right here. And wait a minute. Brian Searcy on Facebook says that my satchel here looks like a, what did you say, feeding bag for a horse. Yeah, you're, you're kind of right, it kind of does. But uh, a very happy, wrench-worthy horse. <laughs> awesome, keep your comments coming. So again, I have it here marked off at eight inches, so I have my trusty ruler. And let's see here, my cutting tool. You can be an X-Acto knife, you can use scissors. Now, if this is your first time making uh, this wallet, I highly advise you cut additional to eight inches because you can always trim it back and you're going to see why pretty soon here. So I'm going to continue and we are going to lay another row of the same tape and we can just eh, lay it kind of like over here and that looks pretty straight to me. Now another advantage of using uh, glass is that it's really easy to peel the tape off the glass. Otherwise, sometimes you're struggling with that adhesive and this camo tape is actually pretty good quality tape. So the adhesive is great. It's a nice two inch wide piece of tape. And what you're gonna do with this pretty side here is just pull it up and now we're going to overlap. The objective here is to create a piece that is three and a half inches long. So let's attempt that and see how that goes. So I'm gonna go ahead and we see one, two, three and a half right here on this dotted line. And I like to start with the glass side and then roll on down to the tape. So we have that side done. Now we're gonna repeat the same thing with the silver. Now the silver is a little bit different. Now I bought this at the um, discount store and you can tell why. First of all, it's not two inches wide. So, you know, they're saving a little bit there by just skimming off, I would say about a quarter of an inch. And the adhesive on this is not as strong, but these are great for workshop projects that, you know, they're kind of temporary and you don't have to, have maximum adhesion, but trust me, this has gotten me out of a jam oh a plenty. So let me go ahead and cut that to our eight inches as well. And again, if this is your first time doing this, cut to about like eight and a quarter or eight and a half inches, just to kind of give yourself a little bit of room uh, to trim. So I'm gonna put this piece down here as I run out of room. Now, do you all have any pets? Because I do, and anytime you do any type of tape or anything like that, well, pet fur makes an appearance. So this might be 
wallet with some pet fur on it. So now we have our pieces here and we're gonna do the same, except instead of making a piece that's three and a half inches tall, we're actually gonna make a piece that is exactly three inches. So this is pretty easy. And this tape here, I'm gonna actually stand for this one. This piece of tape is, again, a little bit less wide than our camo tape, which is fine. You're always gonna have some overlap here. And now this is probably the toughest part of the whole thing. And if you mess this up, you gotta start all over again. Oh my gosh. So here it is, drum roll people, drum roll. So sticky side up of the pretty side. Now remember, this is the taller side. This is the not so tall side. So here we go. Now the objective is, if you believe it people, is to lay this on top of this piece and match up the corners so we leave that half inch border sticky side on the top. So the way I like to do it, and that's why we like doing these things live is because uh, we like to show all the fails because it happens. Uh, we don't cut them out or anything like that. So what I like to do is start with one corner and then match up the other corner while holding it up like this and then have it fold on down and with any luck, you might get a few wrinkles, but that's not too bad. And check it out, not bad for our try here. So this is kind of what you end up with. You can see the sticky side going there. Now say you got a couple wrinkles, no problem, or say it's not really lined up. You have a couple jagged edges. Well, if you cut it a little bit longer than eight inches, well, you can use an X-Acto knife and trim this to eight inches. So as long as you have that, you're good. So all we're gonna do now is take this sticky side and create a border. So check that out. We're gonna just fold it over. And that's looking pretty good there. Create a nice little camo border. Have it fade. And there we go. And now all you're going to do again, we are going to repeat this exact same thing, but instead of eight inches, we are going to do it seven and a half inches. So you can see it's a little bit shorter. So it's the exact same process on the silver side. This is three inches tall. This is three and a half inches tall. And I went ahead and laid it on top because man, I got lucky with this one. I didn't want to try and double or should I have done it? So all we're going to do here is because this is seven and a half inches, we are going to chop it right in the middle. So, so my blade doesn't get caught in all this adhesive here. I'm just going to flip this around and line it up with my lines here. And we are going to measure three and three quarters. So 3.75. So one, two, three blocks. And that's one of the reasons I love this uh, cutting board and the angles really come in handy too for making templates. Uh, and I'm talking, uh, automotive a bracket templates for when uh, you do a lot of aftermarket uh, installations. Sometimes you got to move things around under the hood. So let's see how well this comes apart. Amazing. So if you think about it, these are our two flaps, which are basically going to equal the two halves of our wallet here. And all I'm going to do now is take our backing here and this is where the money is going to be. So I'm going to use this one as kind of a guide for myself just to kind of remember how I did this last week. And this is going to lay right on top, just like that. And we're going to line the two ends. And now that they meet nicely, all we're going to do is end a fold just like that. So what you end up with is one, it's got a little flap like this. So the ugly side you don't want to see, that's going to be inside our pocket because eventually this is going to be sealed and our little pocket is going to be in here. So all we're going to do now is repeat on this side. Just going to lay it flat and line up the top. So the adhesive peeks out. And once that's pretty done there, we're just gonna go ahead and fold. 
And there we have it. We have both ends of our wallet complete. We still have a little bit more to go, but the inside here, the outside where our cards and ID are gonna go. So we're gonna take a break. I'm gonna give you a chance to catch up to what I have going on here by checking out the number two shop, the number two duct tape workshop hack that I have. And it's sitting right here. And this is another one that I really use. Like I actually use all these. So, and this is rope. So, one of the reasons I like to use this versus wire hangers is it doesn't mar any other surfaces. So if you have to hold an exhaust in place or you have to hold anything in place while you're working underneath the car, it's also great for painting parts and it's reusable. Now, in the previous video, you saw how I made my fabulous uh, handle here by just folding the tape. Now, of course you can do that, but it's far more strong and much more bendable and um, customizable if you do it this way. And I'll show you how I did it. So check this out. So all you have to do is attach one end to something sturdy. So my floor jack handle pretty much does the trick. And then you wanna pull it out to longer than what you think you're gonna need it because as you wind this thing up, it's gonna get shorter. So I used whatever tool I had lying around like that screwdriver and just pick a direction and start twisting. It doesn't matter which direction you go. So I'm twisting along and you wanna get it until it's totally taut. You wanna hold it taut the entire time that you're doing this and until you get it nice and nice and thin till it wants to snap off either end then you know you're pretty much done so that's what it ends up looking like this is another thing that i use pretty much as much as this believe it or not so that's it for my number two workshop duct tape hack Wow. <laughs> All right, so where are we in this uh, wallet madness here? So, okay, to recap, we have our backside and then we have our side with the uh, inserts for our credit cards and our ID. So continuing on, talking about credit cards, well, let's make those inserts. So in order to do that, all I'm gonna do is move this out of the way and we are gonna take our camo tape or whatever decorative tape you're using or heck, even plain uh, silver tape is fine too. And I'm gonna lay this on the mat here. I'm gonna lay it a little closer to you guys and just press that down and the objective here is recall that we cut this here to three inches and three quarters so 3.75 inches so we want to repeat that with this piece of tape so one two three and then three quarters right there all right I'm just gonna take a moment to refresh uh, my commentary here there we go. I wish I had a wallet like that, T-Web. I know. Well, you can make one. Grab your duct tape. It's not too late. Catch up. Come on. <laughs> and of course, T-Web seems to like what we're doing. Uh, but what brand? What brand of duct tape? So this one is called, to really confuse things, duct tape. So this is the brand duct tape that makes duct tape. Yeah, that's why you hear people saying duct tape, duct tape tape. Well, that's where the confusion come in. I blame this little duck guy here. Thumbs down on the duck. <laughs> Anyways, so we have a piece of our camo, again, three and three quarters inches uh, long here. And however tall your tape happens to be, it is what it is, right? Because we're going to see the differences in uh, tallness of tapes here. So we're going to lay the back side. Now you can use all pattern tape, that's fine. It's kind of expensive. Um, I like to kind of just, where it's not really seen, to use the less expensive stuff. So again, the way we laid our tape, we're gonna do the same thing here. Dum, 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 the moment where it can all go wrong and the live stream will end. Actually, no, the live stream actually will continue because I'll be laughing uh, along with you guys laughing uh, because I know you guys will be laughing with me not at me right yeah I figured <laughs> all right so here we're going to get very sophisticated with pinkies extended I found this is the easiest way to do it because the ends tend to curl up on you so I'm gonna hold them like that with my pinky very sophisticated 
and hold this in place and again matching up to the bottoms and you just want to lay it as directly on top as possible uh, now I'm being very brave and cutting everything to size uh, some of you may want to cut these a little bit longer like make it a full four inches and then cut it down to size uh, that way you can you know not have to be so exact with everything now one of the things that you're going to notice right off the bat here is that I have an adhesive edge now were these an exact two inches uh, I wouldn't have that. So we're just going to pretend uh, that that uh, that this uh, fully extends and you can see where those uh, discount stores save money. Look, they're taking away an eighth inch from me. Oh, that's where you get that the dollar um, duct tape. So once you have this done, well, think about it. This is our insert here and this is where you're going to put your credit card. But because the camo pattern, it's kind of tough to see. I'm going to add a little bit of trim here, just like I did right here, some trim. So all I'm going to do now is take, uh, remember the width of that is three and three quarters. So I'm going to take a width of four because I want to factor in some mess up tape right here. So let's do four inches across and so Rick Franz agrees with my pinky technique. He is saying when in doubt, pinkies out. So I knew I had a, a fellow compadre out there that would understand the pinky technique. One, two, three, four. I am counting squares, people. All right, so four squares equals four inches. All right, so now that's done. Well, you can uh, go ahead and cut this in half however you want. Now I try and use up as much tape as possible and have as little waste as possible. And I think I want my trim to be like a quarter of an inch. Now I went a half inch on this. I think it's it ended up being a bit much. So let's try a quarter of an inch and then we'll vote at the end uh, in terms of which one we like best. So in order to create that, I'm gonna cut a strip that is half an inch. So when we fold it over, it'll become a quarter of an inch. So let me uh, just stick this guy over here and I'm gonna stick them vertical and I'm gonna line them up with one of these lines and I'm gonna take advantage of this sticky side up situation. And the objective here, dum dum dum, is yet again to try and lay this flat. And I'm gonna overlap it by a quarter of an inch. So I'm gonna use my little boxes here uh, as a guide. And oh no, it moved, no, it won't be exact. <gasps> That's what happens when you don't use the pinkies out technique. All right. So, all we're gonna do now is just fold this guy over like we've been doing. And now you're gonna notice that we have a little bit of a excess here, an excess over here. And that's why I made it the four inches because that way it makes it a lot easier for us to cut. Plus trying to put a piece that is super exact on top is really hard. And I personally have not mastered that one yet. So that one I cut a little bit long. And here we have, it's going to sit right up like this, a card pocket. So all you're gonna do now is repeat the same thing two more times or for as many card cards that you wanna be able to put in here. So I thought that three card pockets are pretty good. And so while I let you guys catch up because I went ahead and cut out two more card pockets just to prepare. And let me show you how I did the ID. So you're gonna have an ID here and typically you want that to be a clear plastic. And there's a couple options for um, accomplishing this. So option number one, if you really have, you wanna use what's lying around, you could take this clear tape right here and lay it and double side it like I did. Now there's a couple kind of drawbacks to this technique. Number one, I found it impossible to remove all the air bubbles that's inside and I'll hold it down here. You guys will have a much better idea and if I hold it up against this, it's just air bubble central. Also, all your fingerprints get on there. It looks pretty bad, but you know, listen, if you got nothing else, go for it. Heck, I have. So. No judgment coming from this end. So the other option that I had lying around actually is I'm gonna dive down here under my table here. 
So I went to a car show and I got this cool uh, promotional card that they were having. It was their, um, uh, I think their 46 year anniversary or something. And I thought it was really cool. So it came in a box, right? And just like a lot of toys, children's toys, grown up toys, well, it's usually got plastic on it, so check that out. So I started ripping some of the plastic, which I used for our first wallet, and I still have some left over, guys. So what I went ahead and did, because it takes a little more time to cut out that plastic, is cut it out and create a little border for it. So now we have our credit card inserts right here, three and three quarters inches. Now you can buy this pre-made and cut it down to size, but I cut this the exact same width as our credit card holder, except that it is two and a half inches tall. And then you can trim it as you like. You can make the trim whatever thickness, so quarter inch for me. So while you guys catch up, we are gonna go to my number three workshop duct tape hack. Yeah, nailing it, you guys. So check this out. In the shop, well, sometimes you get thirsty. And most of all, the way I go through tape rolls, sometimes it's masking tape for paint jobs. Sometimes it's duct tape. And I save them all because they make great little containers for small bits parts. So you can stop there at the small bits parts. Heck, I even made this uh, beautiful tote that I, from the comments, it looks like half of you guys are loving and the other half are like, yeah, I would not rock that. Well, soon one day you guys will be as cool as those of us that do. So anyways, I took my small parts bin duct tape roll container and turned it into a drink holder. That's right, because after a hard day of wrenching in the shop, well, yeah, we all like to kind of sit back, relax, have a beverage of our choosing. So that's been sitting out there about a month. It actually holds up pretty well. And I've also used it around my stool. So the stool that I uh, am sitting on right now, it's great. You can put a couple of them for small parts again or for a drink and just pull it out anytime you want and keep everything organized on your chair. So that is my quick chair drink small parts holder. All right, moving on with our wallet. So I trust that you have all of your um, all of your uh, credit card inserts. Some of your comments are cracking me up. <laughs> so your credit card inserts and your ID. So Bob Thorpe says, need some trim, baby. So yeah, that's what we did. We trimmed it. <laughs> when in doubt, trim it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and lay our, um, our wallet out flat like this and let's get started. So the next step is to kind of figure out how we want to lay this. So, you know, something like this. I want some room to pull my credit cards out. You know, maybe a little bit of space like that. You know, just kind of making it look different from kind of what I had before. So let's get started. I'm gonna kind of remember that and gently move it out of the way. And I'm gonna take this piece of tape and just move it over here just in case I need it so oh it folded so I guess we won't be using you anymore oh no all right the first casualty of the stream well wow, I got pretty far without any casualties people so it's, it's looking pretty good all right so we're gonna choose this color tape right here and we are gonna go ahead and lay out three and three quarters inches because we want to match the width of our little credit card here credit card holder and let's see one two three and three quarters make that cut right there now the width of each of your strips doesn't really matter i don't like to go super super uh, huge with them so let's call it like i don't know three quarters of an inch probably no more than that and pull it out and pull this right back in. It's coming back into the action. And I'm gonna move these. So now I know that I liked this kind of in this position. And all I'm gonna do is, it's tough to see with the camo. See, it's already working where the insert ends. So this is gonna be super awesome in hiding my money and preventing me from buying so many car parts. So 
That gives us our first flap. Check that out, nice. Now, one of the things that I notice is when you open the flap, you can kind of see the sticky there. Now, eh, optional, you can leave that as is, but I think I'm gonna cover it up. And that's where our clear tape comes in. So, I have a couple strips cut out here. And I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of cover the icky sticky. So, and that's also cut to three and three quarters inches. So that's kind of where my first card will be. Now let's figure out, I think my second card was somewhere right here. And if you've been watching uh, videos with me, you know how much of an eyeballer I am. Total eyeball in it. This is probably the most measuring that any of you guys have seen me do. And again, I'm gonna cut this to three quarters and cut some of my ruler off because this thing is so sharp. Got a sharp brand new blade for you guys. So here we go. And something like that, a little peekaboo. And, and we're gonna do the same thing here where we're gonna get rid of these stickies. I don't wanna be pulling out no gummy credit cards. And there. Beautiful. So now we got two inserts ready for credit card action. And there is the final one. All right. Something like that. And do the same. get rid of the stickies on here see here my dogs in the background they are super excited for this wallet because they're like man if she's not gonna buy car parts anymore or as many that means more treats for us yay she was like going through our treat budget for her car parts and that's just no good so we have our one two three card inserts and now we're gonna do the same here with our clear and I'm kind of liking it you know what let's make it match up with this guy up there so same thing I'm gonna go ahead and uh, oh I guess I have no more strips left so I'm gonna cut another strip of the camo and laying it Again, three and three quarters inches. Cutting it that way. All right, and I'm gonna make this one because it's clear. Maybe like a, maybe like a half an inch. Half an inch. And I like to save all these pieces because you pretty much use them. So. Got that all lined up and I'm just gonna tape the bottom. Looking pretty good. So for now we have one, two, three cards and we have our um, ID card there. And all we're gonna do now is, well, I mean, things are gonna start falling out if we put them in. So let's start securing some of these sides. And I'm gonna do that with this extra piece of tape here. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut this, I don't know, in the middle. This sounds about good right here. <laughs> it sounds about good. It looks about good. Um, all right. So all I'm gonna do is just take this and kind of line it up with a line like that and what we want to do is actually I want to line up this corner right here overlap it starting from the top by a quarter of an inch so you see this line here and we're gonna overlap and pull it all the way down so it goes from dotted line to dotted line right there and then I'm gonna flip and Make sure it's nice and flat. We are gonna fold this over, or I guess I'm gonna fold this over just like that. And we're gonna cut this excess off right here. 
there we go. So one less place for our cards to be falling out of so we have this end secure and you can see we're already beginning to make our pocket. So I'm gonna do the same thing on this side and lift this piece of tape up and same deal, let's line this side up with a straight line and overlap it by a quarter of an inch. Oops, it's a budging. Better bring out my pinkies. And, and a quarter. Press that down. And then we are gonna flip, flip a roux, and then fold, flip and fold, <laughs> and then cut the excess trim off. So that's it for creating most of the wallet. So we're more than halfway done. We have places for our credit cards right there. It is secured. We got almost a pocket going on here. We have a place for our ID here, but something is missing. We kind of need our billfold, right? So this is where we're going to create the back. But first, it is time for another workshop duct tape hack. And this is number four, I think we're on, right? Yeah, number four. So shops get dirty. We all know this and we all have different ways of taking care of it. So this is one way that I found is super helpful when you're working in a small environment and you need to keep track of dust. You can't just sweep it outside because it's your home garage. The dust gets over your cars, your neighbor's cars. So check out what I do on a weekly basis. Dirt in the shop, gross. Some of you saw my live stream where I was sanding down a piece of furniture. We're using that for another show and it created a huge mess, dust everywhere. But no matter how much I swept, I always end up with that little bit that's left over. Now, some people, well, you just kind of swish it around and kind of spread it and then it kind of becomes invisible or you can sweep it outside. But this stuff tends to accumulate and I have a white Hummer, so I started seeing all kinds kinds of dust and crud on it. There could be nails in there. So I've picked up a couple nails from the driveway. So I just started to either vacuum or pick everything up. And so what I do is I set this pan in the corner of the shop out of the way. I tape it down and throughout the week, I'm sweeping up in there. See my little sweep dance, you know, super cool. And when it gets full, then I empty it and I tape another one down. So that's another hack that I actually use personally in the shop. So. Let's wrap up this wallet already, right? I mean, I got monies to spend. My cards need uh, performance parts, you know. So what should I buy next? So I have cold air intake, uh, exhaust. Uh, you know what? I do need a tune, but the Hummer does need an HID light kit and maybe a light bar. So I might do that. All right. But first, I probably need some more wallet to be able to finish those purchases. So next, we're going to do more sandwiching and not in the kitchen kind, unfortunately, because I am getting hungry. So let's go ahead and uh, start making our tapes again. And so this time we've done widths of eight inches. We've done widths of seven and a half inches and now we're gonna go even bigger with a width of nine inches so I'm gonna start down here so I don't run out of room and so for your colored um, pattern or your patterned duct tape you want to go nine inches with that so let me grab my uh, trusty ruler here and we're gonna cut a nine inches and then we're gonna cut another nine inches and double up here. And this will be the final sandwiching of, of the wallet. So Don Stricker is asking, what are you building, Diva? So Don, if you are just joining us, we are actually building this cool nifty wallet. But while we're building the wallet, we are actually going through my top five workshop duct tape hacks that I use on a weekly basis. So we're building the back of the wallet now and also the bill holder. And so we have two nine inch pieces of tape and we're gonna repeat that with the silver. But this time, this is only gonna be eight inches. So 
kind of celebrating the economy tape here. First of all, it is not a full two inches high and we're gonna go even less with it. So should be happy. All right. In true discount form. All right, and if you think about it, a roll of duct tape is what? Like $5 or something? So you actually will have made a wallet for way less than that. Now, where are you gonna buy a wallet like that? Plus, it's way super more awesomer than all the other wallets out there. Probably lasts a ton longer too because hey, it's duct tape. And the next wallet, oh my gosh, we should totally up our game and do zip ties. We should incorporate zip ties into the wallet. So that's gonna be my next, next task is to do a wallet with duct tape and zip ties. All right, so we have our uh, wallets or our strips here and I'm gonna start with this one because it's a lot easier. And we're gonna make a three inch like we did, the silver is always three inches. Um, actually, I'm gonna put that back. I picked up the wrong one. And see what happens? I get to talking to you all, and I don't know what I'm doing. All right, so in total, you want this to be three inches tall. So again, always cut a longer strip that'll give you room to mess up because this is like a one-time only deal. You mess this up, well then you gotta start this section over again. So you wanna do the same thing here. We're going to, um, actually I'm gonna leave that where that is. Look at me, getting all ahead of myself. So this we're gonna make three and one quarter inches. And we're gonna do that, two, three, like that. Oop. And glass is great because you can pretty easily rip the tape off. So that's looking pretty good there. And what we're gonna do is lift this guy up. And now you can do this in any order, but I found doing it in this order is a little bit easier. And we are gonna lift this guy up. Here we go, here's some sandwiching going on. And now what we're gonna do is line this guy up as much as we can on these lines because we're gonna use them. And the idea is we're gonna create a border. So we're gonna lay this on top, but we're gonna want a border. So we're gonna want half an inch going around the left, right, and bottom. And then we want a quarter of an inch going up at the top. So theoretically, if my math is correct, and I'm gonna use my pinky, my pinky method here, because this is the moment of truth. We're going to lay this on top while whilst creating a border. Um, so here we go. I'm gonna lay this right on our, I need more fingers, like a mutant. All right. So I think I got it, guys. I think I got it. But it's not tall enough. So something went off with my math. So I'm gonna cut, it's savageable. I'm gonna cut another piece of tape, nine inches. So here's an idea. Had I lain or laid, <laughs> I'm getting very uh, vocabularish on you guys, but had I laid this piece of tape first with our half an inch border and half an inch border, then laid this piece of tape separately on top, I would have had enough overlap here where I would have been able to create the border I need. But because I tried to be all Miss Speedy here and lay them both, well, look at what happened. Well, my efficiency is not being uh, rewarded at this time. Seven, eight, nine. It's like, look at you trying to be all good and efficient, and move this project along. Uh-uh. The wallet says, uh-uh. I want to make you work for your savings. So here we go. Now I'm going to try and, well, you know what? One of the cool things now is that I can legit stick this on. It's not going to go anywhere. That's kind of nice. So now I'm gonna go ahead and make this 
And you know what? This time I'm going to make it a half inch because it all tried to get all mouthy on me. Well, now we're going to have a half inch border. So I changed it from a quarter inch on top to a half inch all around. Everybody gets equal border love, equal border love. There we go. It's a special today. All right. So now we end up with our silver and our border here, all half an inch. So all I'm going to do is take only one end and we're going to go ahead and fold it over just like that. And Reese Johnson says, hey, Rachel, I'm just tuning in. Well, thanks for tuning in. We are making a duct tape wallet while we're viewing my top five. Oh, that's 10. So five hacks. See, I'm using my discount duct tape and I try to discount you guys, you know, 10. Oh, no, never mind. Just five. That's a discount hack. <laughs> All right. So we have one of these uh, flipped over here. And all we're gonna do is just kind of prep this by cutting out a triangle or a square. Let's review shapes, everybody. So I'm gonna cut that out and just leave that ready to go. All right. So, and I'm just gonna score up here. So our official back is ready to go on the rest of our back here. So this is another part where it's just about laying it carefully on top and we're just going to use the top portions here to line everything up and get it all happy laying down. Our happy camo. All right, so now starts the fun part. We want to make sure that our flaps are super flat down and we're going to first start by taking the bottom and bending that up to create our seal. And you can also see that this now creates our pockets. So we have our pockets done. But before we start to fold this in, remember, revenge. You, just when you thought it was dead, it's like the zombie movies. You gotta shoot them twice <gasps> because there is the sticky. So all you wanna do is just cut an eight inch piece of your clear and just stick it in like that. There we go. That'll take care of our bills getting all gummy and things like that. We don't want that. So let's flip this back over. And now we're ready to finish this thing already, right? Guys, it's time to finish it. So, flipping over and flipping over our beauteous wallet. And in order to finish it off, so we have our wallet done, we have where we put our bills for when you go to swap meets and it's a cash deal. But then for online shopping, we got our credit cards. And then for after all the wrenching, well, our ID to get into the bars and relax a little bit. So it's like a multi-use wallet. So the only thing you're gonna find that you may need to do is just cut slits. So where the credit card goes in, just go ahead and cut a simple little slit. It just gives you more room for your credit cards, especially if you have quite a few that you want to stick in here. So same deal here, just cut. And then same thing on your ID side. So there you have it. We now have two amazing wallets all with credit card pockets, ID pockets, everything that you're gonna need. So time to get online shopping and let's see if the camel does its trick. So, you know, I'm shopping and shopping and oh my gosh, it's time to pay and it's a camel wallet. Oh my gosh, where is it? I don't see it. It camouflages, even if you pull it out of your pocket, it just blends in with the background. So it'll help you save money, not buy as many credit cards, so we hope, but we all know how that's gonna go. Totally buy credit cards. So our wallet is done, and yes, we are missing our final fifth hack. And what is it? 
This is our caulk saver. So of course, we not only work in the garage or our workshop, we work in the house too. So I was just working in the kitchen where I sealed, you know where your tile meets the counter and that um, seal kind of gets old, it starts to crack away the grout. Well then you gotta reseal it because it gets all like nasty in there. So I just finished doing that among a couple other things. And we all know you try and put the top on this, you try and seal it with tape, it just gets gummy and it doesn't really protect it. So here is how I figured out how to save my caulk and also find a way to store it in an easy accessible way. So check this out. So you got your typical uh, caulk cartridge here and I just finished using it. So I'm gonna go ahead and cap it. And to do this, just cut some tape that's longer than the tip fold it over and now this is the important part. You wanna just squeeze everywhere to make sure there's no air getting in to dry it all up because you wanna reuse this as many times as possible. And this one's been reused quite a few times. And then after that, of course, well you got some leftover at the top and you can just hang it in your uh, pegboard or on your pegboard and it's ready to go again. So if you have several different uh, cocks for different projects, you got your clear and your white and your colored. So you can have them all hanging there and they look super nice. So this has been it, you guys. We made an amazing wallet. If you guys have made one while we're watching or even if you're just kind of finishing up or maybe you want to rewatch this whole thing and make one, post the pics down below. I would love to see them and your other duct tape projects and of course post your duct tape hacks of course we got my uh, this was probably the number one winner in terms of commentary so smash the likes for all these amazing rope and um, duct tape uh, hacks the duct tape wallet post yours down below in ways that you use duct tape on a daily basis at the shop because I would love to hear them and you know probably steal a lot of them for myself so until next time I'm Rachel DeBarros and you've been watching Gearhead Diva